Hey guys, this is Sir Chris. Um, thank you for the interest in the FATS indicator, the Fibonacci Auto Trend Scouter. I appreciate all of the love you guys have been showing lately on this indicator, your interest in it. And I've seen a couple of comments of you asking for just a guide on, on how to use it and how this indicator works overall, the value it adds. So here we go. First of all, this is the, the main thing about this indicator. It's all about painting the support and resistance levels. And support and resistance levels are none other than price levels at which it is thought or expected that the price action will tend to stop and reverse. So a support level such as this right here would be a level where you can it, it the, where the price is more likely to bounce off this level like it does here rather than break through it however once the price has broken as has breached this level by an amount exceeding some noise it is likely to continue falling until meeting another support level and you can see that happening here as well now our resistance level is exactly the opposite as a support level. It is where the price tends to find resistance as it rises. And you can see that happening over here at the, at the number one Fibonacci support uh, resistance level. Now, what other support, what are the, the support and resistance levels that we find drawn in this indicator? This is the outer trend indicator. So one of the coolest things it does is it draws the, the trends it draws lines for the current price action trend i'm going to show you how we do this is we're going to open up the config panel and i urge you to open this up and play around with it one of the best things this indicator has is just the amount of options customization options that it gives you it's there's a couple of things of features just toggled off by default that you're going to miss if you don't open this so and, and so many things that you can change to make it look and feel precisely how you want for your own uh, style and use. So go ahead, open up this, open this up, explore, play with it, and get a feel for the indicator and make it your own. So first of all, you can, you're going to see over here that by default, the, the trends are drawn from the high and low values. From, from the highest highs and lowest lows, but you can you can change that to the source and you can pick uh, close or any of the other data source options. You're gonna see the trends being drawn from there because the way we draw these trends, I'm gonna move it back to highs and lows. The way we draw these is from the two different time frames, uh, time lengths that, that, that we have. And we're gonna call it the short trend and the long trend. We now have 13 and eight body. You can make that your own, do it however you want. And I'm gonna toggle on one of these labels, the one for the short, just to show you that for each of the lengths of trends, what we do is we grab, we save a coordinate for the highest highs and the lowest lows values. The last seven high highs and low low values for each of the trends and this these coordinates are what we use to draw the lines same thing with the with the um, long trend and one of the cool things for, of these labels is if you hover over them it's it actually packs a bunch of information in it it's going to show you which um just the id the value of the price at that level the values of the coordinate, and it even shows you the amount of time uh, that has that that uh, the amount of time difference from the last coordinate to this coordinate in time format in bars format for your current uh, chart time frame. It's gonna show you the difference in the value, uh, how much it has grown or decreased, and the amount of change per bar, which. I think it's pretty cool. You may find that information useful and you can find it hovering over the labels. And you can see on the, if we go to the options for the short trend, for example, some of the configurations you have is, I'm gonna bring back the short labels. 
some of the configurations you have is you can choose the uh, from which section to which section the trend line is being built. So right now we're drawing from the back section to the mid section and the back section is going to be either six or seven or six or five, depending on what the what the current uh, last coordinate is, if it's the lowest low or if it's the highest high, then the sections are going to change to either be the, these last two or this last two, right? And so on. So right now, because the first one is a lower low, then the back section is built from six and five. And that's why you can see, because we're drawing from back to mid and from back to mid, we are drawing from the, the top line from the six towards the fourth and from the seventh towards the, uh, I mean, from the five towards the third coordinate. But if you were to change it, you're going to see it's going to draw towards the second and towards the first coordinate. Another thing that we have, and I'm, I'm going to change it back to show you, because another thing that we have is the, the, the lines. You can change the type of line, dash, solid. You can change the width. The extensions, you can change that to styles, width. And the extension themselves, are really cool because you can also lean on these as support and resistance levels even for the future once the price action breaks out of the triangle or channel that the trend lines paint if you have the extend lines on which they are by default you can see how they they also react uh, act as support levels for the future so that that's a pretty cool feature you can also change the colors uh to have uh the color you want for color coding or if you if you don't want that, you can turn that off and only paint with the default color, however you want to do. We have the same options for the long trend. You can see one of the uh, one of the features we also have is the 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 site option. The site, I'm gonna turn it on. You're gonna notice a new new line being drawn, and what this new line is is the midpoint of this current trend. It draws a line from the midpoint uh, of the midsection, because that's the one selected right now. It draws a line from the midpoint of those of the, the high and low of that section towards the current value. So it's it kind of shows you what what the direction of the what the current direction is. If we're moving more like towards a, a higher or towards towards lower towards breaking it. Uh, it it may give you some useful information it may not it's up to you play around with it the option is there for you we have as you can tell you we have the same amount of options for the long trends and we even have a third a custom trend if it's the case that you, you want to be able to make uh, draw trend lines from some sections of the back of the longer trend to sections of the of the shorter trend, you are able to do that with this custom trend. So which you can toggle on and off just each line individually. We're going to toggle on the top line. We can draw like from the back of the long to the to the front of the short. And you can see, I'm going to turn off the colors on this one. You can see from long, from the back section of the long trend to the front section of the short trend, we have that selected on both. You can see it paints that trend, that trend over here as well, which can give you some really nice additional information of the of the current trend, and the and the relation of both trends within themselves, which is pretty cool. It also has uh, option to extend so on. I'm going to toggle those off just to keep the chart clean while we go through it. Another really cool feature is the higher time frame levels. So while you're you know going through your your technical analysis, about to make a decision, you may you may see some movement, you think it's going to move up or move down, but you you're probably going to want to move into a higher time frame just to confirm that you're seeing the same thing, right? So one of the cool features this has is if we you're able to show a moving average from a higher time frame of your choosing. 
So you can choose the data source and you can choose the time frame that you wanna pull data in from different from the current uh, time frame of the, of the current chart you're in and show a moving average that you can set the length of as well and show a moving average of that higher time frame. So we can see here, we're showing a moving average of the six hour time frame on our 15 minute chart. I think this adds a lot of value and to keep con staying consistent with the overall theme of this indicator, which, which is we want to keep things as clean and, and slick as possible. You're able to change the color as well, the style of the line, the width, and the size of the moving average. So if you wanna see a longer, longer length of the moving average, you can go ahead and, and, and increase the size and you can see how, how it's much higher now, or just keep it short. You can do that as well. You just keep it to your own liking. If you don't even wanna show the plot and you just wanna show the label, for that moving average, you can toggle that on, toggle off the plot, and it's still gonna be able to show you that higher time frame data in the form of the label. It's it shows you which which plot it was, or which data it's gonna be showing you. And if you hover over it, it meaning it, it even gives you what the price level of that uh, support or resistance level is. Now we give you three options here. You have one, two, all of them have the same configuration options. And you're probably gonna want to revisit this if, if you if you jump from one time frame to another. Like if, if I were to jump into a six hour chart, then you're probably gonna want to go in and, and customize this and change it to another time frame, maybe a 12 hour a day, so on, you know, just to make it useful for whichever chart you're on at you're in at the moment. You have three options for these higher time frame moving averages. And now let's move on to what I think is the coolest part of this indicator, which is the automatic Fibonacci support and resistance levels. So if you don't know what Fibonacci is, it's a, it's a pretty magical uh, pattern of sequence of numbers. Cause it's the really cool thing is that the way this pad, the this sequence goes is the first two numbers are zero and one, and each succeeding number equates to the sum of the previous two numbers. And what's cool about it is the golden ratio, because each subsequent number is going to be about the the golden ratio in difference, which is one point six one eight. And this pattern is it's it's a sequence that you can find in nature all around us, which is really cool. And so the theory behind this is that you can find that pattern in the stock market as well. And you can see it right here where, where you, you really can see a reaction to these Fibonacci support and resistance levels on the price action may be because it's part of nature, may be because of, of psychological factor on traders not being aware of these levels, but they definitely work. So how, how we are we building these? Well, I showed you the labels before and the way we do this is we draw a, we give it, we select the maximum, the highest value and the lowest value for each of the, of the trends. So on the short trend, we get the, the, the highest uh, coordinate value and the lowest coordinate value. And we build the Fibonacci levels from there. Now, if you want to see these, which lab labels they are, you can actually toggle on the source labels and it's going to show you labels for which is the high and the low that we, that, that, that we selected, which is these. And you can also toggle on the source line if you want to see it. And it's going to show you the source line from where to, to where um, we are drawing this Fibonacci retracement levels from. You can see the, the lower label of the, of the long time frame and the high label, which is being shared between the two because it's gonna be this, they both have the same coordinate right now. Some other options that you have is the, you can see right now, on the Fibonacci levels, we have the IDs. We have one, two. You don't have the the, the expected ratio, right? 
if you hover over the labels as, as all the other labels in this indicator, they're, they're going to show you more information. This one, you can see this is the this is where it starts from. So it's the ratio zero. But if you go over to the two, you're going to see it's the 0.236 ratio and so on. As all the ratios are, you can see them right here. If you want to see them all, even while they are inactive, you can toggle this on and it's going to show you the FAR labels. The FAR labels are just the, the, the FAR uh, levels of the Fibonacci are just the levels that are not the immediate next support or resistance levels. And you can see they're both styled differently. You have the option to configure that in here on the panel. You have here the active line is set as the solid two. That's why these are thicker and solid. And then the inactive lines, which are the far levels, are as dotted in one. And you also have the option to select how many levels farther from the active lines you want to show. So if you just want to show just one more, you can set that up here. And you can see how they, they are hidden. There you go. Same thing for the long time frame and the short time frame. You can change the style and then you can even change the size of the levels. Right now it's 15 and 10. You can change the size towards the left side and the right side, uh, left side and right side. If I were to do 25 here and 20 here, this is gonna be the, the, the long levels. You're gonna see this line change. And if you want to see the ratio instead of the IDs, you can change that here on the show info. You can do ratio. You can also change the color to instead of using all the multiple colors, if you only want to show resistance and support color coding on the levels, you can do that here. And you can see how now we're showing the ratios on the on the levels, on the labels, and we're showing the support resistance color coding instead. You also have the default which you can change over here. So you can have one default for the long time frame Fibonacci's and one default for the short time frame Fibonacci's. There you go. I like it in multi. And so that's pretty much it guys. I encourage you to open up the configuration panel and, and, and explore, make this your own make use of all of the different features that it has. It's going to bring you a lot of value because you're going to find out that price action, the, the, the best indicator that, that you can use for, for determining your, your, your next action is going to be support and resistance level. So that's why this indicator is going to, it's going to add a lot of value to your trading and to your decisions because of the, the many high value, uh, support and resistance levels that it draws for you and just the fact that it keeps it clean for you to not get distracted by too many things too much noise keeps it clean and just keeps it you know and it, it's dynamic and it's automatic for you these the fibonacci levels which are very very handy they change automatically and so do the trend lines so i'm glad i'm happy to make this accessible for you guys i, I love that you guys are loving it as well I'm glad to add value to your trading. So that, that was it, guys. If you have any other questions, leave them in the comment. If you have suggestions, some ideas for improvement, leave those in the comments as well. All feedback is well taken. So happy trading, guys. Go make some money.